Rapport is about getting somebody to connect with you and vice versa. And of course, if you do that in an interview, you explode your chances of actually getting that job. For me, first impressions are essential. If you speak to anyone, they say it's the first impression last. Once you've made that impression with someone, it's very difficult to change their opinion of you. Posture is really important. Uh, you need to walk in there, shoulders back, stand tall, be smiling a little, um, be, have this air of confidence about you. Make sure, once again, you make eye contact with everybody in there. You may be introduced to other people. Good firm handshake, but not too hard where you're going to break the guy or lady's hand. Not the floppy, sweaty fish. That's not pleasant at all. Um, you know, a bit of confidence as you walk in the room. Uh, very unlikely that you're going to get bitten, so you might as well come in um, with your head held high. I would like to think that I subconsciously and make up my mind after five or ten minutes. In reality, it's probably a lot sooner than that. People like people like themselves. So make it really easy for this interviewer to and ultimately offer you the job. And whether they like you or not actually does play quite a big part in this. So there are a number of techniques that you can use to build rapport with the person you're talking to. When they're sitting in the actual chair, leaning forward, showing enthusiasm. Take the chance where you can uh, to notice and spot anything that you can feed back to the company. Such as uh, if they're on nice premises, if the people have been really friendly to you, um, take the opportunity to uh, acknowledge it. You ask a few questions of them and suddenly they're feeling created about themselves but they're interviewing you so it just adds a lot of ways of uh, differentiating yourself from other people. In my uh, office, for example, there are lots of clues as to my hobbies, you know, hobbies and my family, um, whether it be golf awards or photographs of my, my uh, young son and wife. Pictures of my horse, I've got a Buddha on the, on the, on the sideboard, I've got maybe some other magazines, I've got some yoga magazines over there, and it's nice when someone notices things about me and we can get into a conversation because they're very interactive and I immediately you start building a relationship with that person when you're talking about something that you've got in common. If you're asked to sit down at the decision maker or the interviewer's desk just just be aware like you would if you were going into a friend's house or somebody else's home of your personal space and what you're going to take ownership of. They'll ask you some humble, easygoing questions to break the ice. Obviously answer those and see if you can have one or two of your own as well. Like how long have you been in the organisation type thing. It's a proven fact that the more somebody emulates the body language, the more synergy that person feels with the other individual. It works it's worth doing. Mirror and match is, a is what we call it, but basically it's by mirroring and matching their physical posture, but don't be too obvious with it. That's the key to this, but it's important that you do it. But if you can be subtle in how you do that, and you can mirror somebody's actions or, or how, that they, how the, their speech patterns and all the tempo of their speech or their hand gestures. If someone's really up there, in your face, if they're leaning forward, sometimes matching that can be good. Equally, if they sit back and they back off a little bit, maybe you want to consider that too. Listen very carefully to the tonality of their voice. Not so much the content, what they're saying isn't vital at the moment, how they're saying it is. If they speak very quickly, then maybe you should speak a little bit more quickly than you normally would. If they speak with a very high-pitched voice, then don't try and copy the high pitch necessarily, but maybe lift your voice an octave or two. If they speak very slowly and deliberately, then you speak slowly and deliberately. Make it easy for them to communicate with you in the way that makes them comfortable. There is a word of warning there. Just make sure you can do it if you're totally comfortable. If you're not, it can have the complete and opposite effect from what you're looking for. It's also quite a powerful tool to break eye contact sometimes. If you get asked a question and you absolutely know the answer to it, but you want to have more impact with that answer, then what you can do is look away, pause, then deliver your answer. And you actually have a lot more impact. It's a bit like acting. Actors, actresses do this all the time. Once again, the devil is in the detail and these are all of the subconscious decision-making techniques that mean decision-makers, when they, when they talk of people making a gut reaction as to why they employ someone, that's the gut reaction and that's where it comes from.
The use of humour in an interview, um, I think some doesn't go amiss. Um, crude humour, probably not. Um, anything that crosses too many boundaries, not a good idea. There is a competency-based interview question that checks on humour and the question asks, give us an example of when you made somebody laugh. That just shows how difficult the subject of humour is in the interview. It's much better to make sure that you're appreciating it and showing that you enjoy humour and that you do have a sense of humour rather than be the one that is cracking the jokes. The best way to create an impression in an interview is to bring supporting material and this can give you a real advantage over other people attending. It can be certificates, it can be records of sales charts and where you are in those sales charts, it could be a letter from a customer recommending how wonderful service you provided. Reviews uh, from your previous employer or your current employer. Uh, anything that you've done that's made it into the press or industry, any clippings that you've got. If you're in selling, can you bring sales, leagues, tables, targets, anything that you've achieved? Uh, if you've been an employee of the month, have you got a photograph, is there an award? References from senior managers, probably even better from uh, customers or distributors, for example, they may have worked on projects for. And put it in what, I guess what is called a presenter or in some cases a brag file and don't be shy okay an interview is not the place to be shy get that brag pack out on occasions when it's appropriate but get it out hand it over to the person get them to look at it feel it touch it it shows that you're very confident that you can't just talk the talk you've actually delivered something as well providing it's neat and smart crisp and clean we won't necessarily set up a stall and lay it all out on the interviewer's desk but you can keep it with you in a briefcase and make sure that any opportunity when it does come up or if they ask you about it, you've got it there to bring out.